So here's an SAT practice problem from a calculator section, and this problem can definitely be overwhelming. There, there's quite a bit going on within this problem. It's not too bad, so hopefully after we discuss it a little bit and make some sense out of what exactly what we have going on, uh, you're going to be pretty confident if you ever encounter anything like this on your actual SAT. So we've got a square field measures 10 meters by 10 meters. We've got 10 students. They each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each of the regions is a square and has dimensions one meter by one meter. None of the regions overlap. So I guess I'm kind of going out of order here, but I wanna kind of show you what the field looks like. So I, I got a little piece of graph paper. If you count across here, you're gonna see 10 units. If you count down this direction, you're also gonna see 10 units. And what I have is I have these 10 little, uh, they're labeled with letters A through J, I have these 10 little squares one by one, right? One unit by one unit for A, one unit by one unit for square B. I've got these 10 little regions of the overall field being shown by these 10 students who randomly selected those regions within the field. So what these students are gonna do is they're gonna go and dig down into the soil to a depth of five centimeters and they are gonna count how many earthworms the soil contained. And so the first student who chose to do this for region A, they dug down, they counted 107 earthworms. You see that for the rest of the students, obviously the numbers are, are kind of close, but none are exactly the same. And that's what's to be expected. Uh, it says, which of the following is a reasonable approximation for the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface for the entire field? So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna assume that the average of these 10 regions that were selected, right? We don't have the entire field covered by these 10 regions that I'm just kind of highlighting right here, right? These were the only areas of the entire field, which is outlined by this big blue square that were actually studied. We've got, if you, if you think about it, it's a 10 by 10 square. We have 10 regions within that being covered, but we have 100 overall regions there, right? 100 total regions exist within this square. So we're basically covering 10% of the overall field through this analysis. But what we can do is we can find the average of these 10 random regions. So the average of the 10 random regions would be adding up the total number of earthworms, right? So 107 plus 147 plus all of these values, add all those up, figure out the total number of earthworms that they found in this 10% of the field, you know, divide by 10, and you get 147.1 earthworms per one by one region of the field on average. How many regions of the field are there? Well, we've got the 10 that we considered plus the 90 that we didn't, so we've got 100 overall regions. So if we take this result and multiply it by 100, we are able to determine how many earthworms there are approximately for the entire field. So look at these options. These options all are, are some variation of 150 being multiplied by something. So if we rounded this up to 150, and it does say approximately, right? So that's fine to do. So if we round this to 150 and multiply by the 100 total regions, multiplying by 100 is just going to stick two zeros onto the end of the 150. So two zeros onto the end of the 150 is going to give us that answer. Uh, overall. Um, if you're not careful enough with reading the wording of the problem, it, it might be tempting to, to answer A. If it said, what's the average number of earthworms per one by for each one by one region of the field, then that's this value. But that's not what it asked. It's what's a reasonable approximation for the number of earthworms beneath the ground surface for the entire field. And we had to multiply that average per one by one region by the 100 total one-by-one one regions that exist in order to answer this question.